My name is Ruby Modine, also Ruby Wilder Rivera Modine. <laughs> and I am an actor, a musician. I've stepped into writing and directing this year. I'm excited to tell you about that. And yeah, an overall lover of life. <laughs> we're already off the rails. <laughs> no, we're all we're on the rails. One one wheel came up. We're we're still good. Uh guys, this is gonna be a very professional interview uh mm -hmm. for professional people. Uh, so I do want to ask you, uh, Miss Ruby, this is the first time we've ever spoken to or met each other, but when did your love for the performing arts begin? When when did that start for me? I can't even, I can't do it. <laughs> How did you grow to love the performing arts? <laughs> okay, I started in Rudolf Steiner when I was in elementary school, and I actually have a photo of it. The first character I ever played was an old man with a cane and a white wig and a beard. And last minute they took the beard off, but I have a photo of this and I'm like crippled over and I'm supposed to be, you know, and then the second character that I ever played was Aphrodite. And I, that was it. I was like, yep, I want to act forever. <laughs> <laughs> now, was this a sort of, uh, I, I guess, was it prefaced by, you know, what your father has done with his career? Did you look at him and see like, oh, he, he gets to, you know, be different people and pretend and do all these different adventures was that something as well or was it solely that experience of being no new? <laughs> no it wasn't solely that experience definitely being on set with my dad was the catalyst of it all because of what you how you just described it perfectly it was it was this adventure right every time he went off he was being he was creating a different person he was becoming a different person and then all the actors actresses the cast, the crew, everybody. I just, I, I felt like it was such a magical world. And that's what you and I often hear, right? Um, when you go into set life, you it turns into like a little bubble. I loved all those bubbles, especially when he did Jack and the Beanstalk as a little girl. Oh my gosh. The, the vine that he climbed up, it was so freaking big. But I, you know, the giants and all, you know, just learning about perception and how they create all of that it was just it's magical to me it's mm -hmm. I, well you've been around it since you were literally the tiniest human being right so that it could either make or break your your love for it so i think that's i don't know that's just really cool i'm a little jealous and a little envious no don't go to that awesome. <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> it's, it's, no it's you just you don't want to uh, cop that in our in our bellies no <laughs> so jealous of ruby she's never coming back on the show i don't know why i'm harrison ford all of a sudden um because yeah harrison that ford is amazing <laughs> it's just a, it's a cool way to to approach that because a lot of us uh, i guess i'll i'll relate it more to you know where i come from it's growing up watching vhs tapes and watching tv and not knowing there's a tangible like physical element to that that happens so yes. you know you you go through these plays you decide this is what you want to do and you were fairly young so like when did it become like a, a career option for you when did that start you know actually um i got into it pretty late i i had that drive i i began with music um and I put a lot of my attention into music while in college. And then when I was in college, I, I had an encounter with somebody that was like, I'm shooting a short film and you would be great for it, which was kind of daunting. And cause I was like, you've never seen me act. So I was hesitant. I was like, this isn't real, but it was real. And uh, that's how I got my first project a visit from the goon squad. I've got like short electric green hair and like, tons of freckles her her uh her name was Rhea it's a, it's based off of a book I think her name is Jennifer Egan and if I'm wrong I look can you correct me in the comments please <laughs> <laughs> but be nice about it <laughs> smiley faces <laughs> that yeah that's a really interesting uh, like I don't know it brought me back to to being in college where those collaborations start where those opportunities come about and it's half and half right it could be somebody who you know wants this project to be made and isn't sure how to do it and they become like this really wonderful artist that you team up with later on or it's you know maybe somebody just looking to like hang out with someone and suddenly you're the only one on set uh, this is not based on personal experience whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> there there's varying ways but it's 
a very pivotal time, right? When you're in college and you start to really develop those instincts creatively and especially with music. I I have listened to your music and I love your music. So, I mean, was that something you wanted to, I don't know, pursue almost half and half after you went back into acting or where did music sit in your life, especially? Music sits in my life on an everyday basis. And I like it because with music and acting, you're exposing two different kinds, like two different sides of yourself, right? And there's different honest parts of yourself going into both arts. And I do like, you know, blending those together from time to time. But like when I try, it it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel the same as, as opposed to when I'm in front of the, the camera and I'm, I'm a character and I'm bringing that character to life. And then when I'm in the studio and I'm like, I have this inside of me and I have to get it out. <laughs> Prep work when it comes to the musical side against the, the acting side, like you said, there's something inside of you in the studio, but when you're in front of camera, it's something different. So what's your approach to those different uh, portions of like creative manifestation between acting and singing? Hmm. I think it is really degrees of honesty because for example, um, I've got three new songs coming out in my studio next door, which you can't see. I'm sitting on the floor on my knees, scribbling, scribbling, making sure that things don't match up. And I'm like, yes, I got it. And I'm leaping up and going to the mic and then trying it many different ways and being really honest about my frustrations that might come up. You know, like I'm trying to sing, oh my gosh, okay, go, you know, like, go back. Let's start again. I'm not going to make that sound on set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to bring that, that degree of vulnerability on set because that's really a ship, right? We're on a ship of people. We don't want to be a part of the reason why it's sinking. But um, I don't even remember what your question was, Tyler. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're getting off the rails in the best way. Uh, no, but, I mean, you were, you were getting there that, that separation between um, the musical prep and then the on-camera prep. Oh you know? yeah. Yeah. I feel like with, it just has to do with like, a, for me personally, I don't know. So I'm preparing for this really cool project by my friend Kyle, um, Persona Non Grata. And it's kind of in the Star Wars world. And I know well, I'm keeping my cool. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> my character's name is Nidus. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in preparation for that and reading it with him and everything, I feel like it's it's such an interesting, you know, it's such an interesting thing bringing elements of yourself into the character and then really creating because, you know, again, going back to that futuristic spacey thing, you there's a lot of imagination to be had there, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas with music, it's just it's fully coming out from you. It's coming from bad, good, beautiful, sad experiences that you have experienced firsthand. That heartbreak that you feel that you just really want to let it go. So it's time to purge that out. But I will say that, and I'm sure you can relate to this, we are purging parts of ourselves when we are acting as characters. You know, but a light example, satanic panic. I'm up on the altar with my wonderful friend, Haley Griffith, and my mother, Rebecca, is about to slit my throat. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never experienced that. I have a great relationship with my mom. I've I've never, you know, I'm getting ready to be sacrificed to Baphomet, Baphomet, excuse me. And you pull from fear and you pull from upset and you, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's just concocting experiences from your life in different ways and deciding what you want to bring in. So for my music, I'm usually going to be so honestly Ruby Modine. God, I feel so tacky saying that. No, don't feel tacky. <laughs> I put my hat on. <laughs> okay. You can't hide yourself from us with a baby. <laughs> it's very cold where I am. I'm in Northern California. <laughs> that's where the hat came in <laughs> just, just so you know you can okay. edit this out you cannot edit it out i could just have a hat on out of nowhere <laughs> I, I, honestly like I, I there might be two cuts to this episode <laughs> okay. that means we have to calm down all right <clears throat> on the rails <clears throat> on the rails mm. uh, but yes i i wholeheartedly agree with you know 
uh, ventilating part of the primal self when you're performing, even though the stakes at your end don't quite match your personal experience. I totally understand that. Absolutely. I know. I feel like I didn't explain that like as eloquently as I would have wanted to, but <laughs> somebody's going to pick up little bits and pieces and be like, I know where she's going with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when, when you're asked these questions off the cuff, none of us have a prepped answer, right? It just starts flowing out of you. You know, dude, you're prep, prep for interviews. It's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. And, you know, and I didn't ask you, I was like, can you send me the list of 30 questions that we're going to be talking about? So I was like, no, not with Tyler. <laughs> nope, nope, that's a one-time thing. <laughs> we're diving into the deep end and hoping there's no sharks. <laughs> I mean, hey, you came back. So uh, I, I feel like- I'm going to come is... back again too. I'm going to, I'm pitching Sutira the Fesson back to you. I'm going to try to get my dad to do your show. I want everybody to do your show. <laughs> oh, and you interviewed Fee. Yes. See, and I, I, I'm sad about that because I, I told him I was going to Sundance. I didn't actually get a chance to go because, I mean, luckily I was working. So that's the oh, reason that's I couldn't go. Uh, but I, I saw all of his photos from Sundance. Everything looked awesome. So now I'm, I'm making a deal with myself. Next year, 2024, go back to Sundance. <laughs> At that point, it'll have been four years. That you'll be able to make Tribeca this year because there might be a film going there. <laughs> um. <clears throat> what what's this what's this now are we at an interview right now <laughs> <laughs> oh yes this is i'm sorry can you go back to your your previous statement about a film i can do british Rebecca? accent too tyler <laughs> <laughs> this is the film that i would like to pitch to you for us to do together we should both be british very beautifully dressed and be fighting <laughs> Ooh, wait emotionally or physically <laughs> We will get a choreographer, a <laughs> stunt coordinator. Tyler, why is your jaw wired shut? Well, you see, Ruby <laughs> has a really like intense roundhouse <laughs> kick. Um, it's absolutely wonderful, but the film is beautiful. You're gonna love it. I know, and we'll win an Oscar for each of it. <laughs> that jaw, it'll be worth it. <laughs> I will do it for you. I'll do it for you. <laughs> but uh, wait, okay, I need to go back. Tribeca. Tribeca. Yes. Um, no, uh, no news to be shared yet. Okay. You'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll be posting like Matt if it happens, but we submitted fingers crossed. That's all we can do. Especially like you going in, I'll fly to Tribeca and we'll do the interview in person. And I'll bring my chessboard. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta show me how to properly play that. Cause I'm just going to be a child. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be great. And we'll play for like three hours because you have to learn and replay and yeah. replay. Coffee. That's when coffee comes in. <laughs> I'm so ready. You, see, you have your coffee. I'm trying to be responsible and I have my fancy little protein shake. Oh, I thought you were going to say water and I was like, well, I have my fancy water too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but is yours triple insulated? And no, it's can... not. You know that mm -hmm. I had pre-workout once <laughs> and it was the most terrifying gym experience of my life. And my trainer, Louise Guzman, who I love, he Wait. was so on it. He was like, did you take pre-workout today? I was like, no. <laughs> and, you know, he's like, I really hope that you didn't because you don't need it. You know what? You know, you get the end of the story. But you had to see me. I was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm here. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Yeah. If you haven't been interviewed by Tyler, I will say that you're missing out. <laughs> I, I and I mean it. My face gets so sore within what are we here like five minutes? <laughs> We've barely been recording for fifteen minutes. <laughs> that is how short this has been. Okay. But, What's the next question? <laughs> <clears throat> well, you okay? So no news on the the Tribeca film. Uh, as far Not as I'm hearing anything, just got to wait that out. But as far as, you know, your writing and directing pivot, what has that been like yes. for you? Because that that just sounds like a boatload of fun. Wildly, like such a wild learning experience. And I haven't actually, these are uh, in pre-production. So um, two projects that I've written, I've taken to my friend Che, who is helping me and guiding me through that world, because this is completely unknown territory to me. And I'm so excited by that because I love to learn new things. Um, but yeah, I wrote a horror movie 
and I wrote a painfully hilarious movie with the help of my dad. And no, Tyler, I'm not going to tell you anything about either one of them yet. <laughs> but um, I'm excited. Uh, I will officially be starting the comedy in late May, early June. April, May, June. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the months right. Yeah, that's how they work. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so so writing writing has been great because of what we were talking about with music. So, but writing a script. There's, it's completely different. So I have a lot of help. I have a tribe around me and I'm really grateful for our, for all of them, excuse me. And I'm excited for the world to see them, you in particular, because <laughs> that'll be like our eighth interview by that point. <laughs> this is going to be a synonymous career. <laughs> yes. Let's just well, talk in, a, in a perfect world, I become your co-host. <laughs> I mean... There's a perfect invitation. I don't have to stay in Colorado. <laughs> I was going to say, so I'm going to have to move to Colorado. Hey, you know, it's a, it's a pretty awesome place. It's not Northern California or anything, but, uh, you know, California. we have an in and out now. So, like, that happened. I'm really That's excited so to see. <laughs> so sweet. Do you like in and out I mean, it's... It, it's all right. <laughs> I, I don't eat fast food a whole, whole lot. So oh, I yeah, because you're, you're training now. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm diving back into it. I'm rewinding like six years. But yeah, I I had it. It was good. I mean, it was it was fast food. I think the best part was the milkshake. And then I drove off thinking people waited two hours for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have no comment in particular, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, do you do you like In and Out, Ruby? Let's let's put you in the hot seat. I would love for In and Out to contact me and ask me to do a commercial for them for their their vegetarian vegan option. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen at some point. Wait, do they have one? Do they have an option? I don't know. Okay. I just love cows so much, Tyler. I think I've told you this in the past. I love them so much. I was driving yeah. past a huge field and there were the most cows I've seen. And it took everything out of me. It's really, it's really important not to trespass on other people's property. And I really do. I respect it, which is why I don't trespass. But I want you so bad just to hug the cows. My neighbors, thankfully, have goats. Uh, why am I telling you this? But my neighbors have goats and pigs. I've named every single one of them Tormund, my dog and I. We have full-on relationships with them. And I'm going to write them a note. I finally decided. I'm just going to be like, please let me just occasionally come over the fence. And I'll just sit in place. <laughs> they have a ram. A ram, two goats, two pigs. Okay, I'll text maybe you I should you. move to Northern California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's okay. My... Quick tangent, my mom passed on the amazing social media following of fluffy cows. And that have just been washed? The best. Oh, yeah. Like the, the tiny, like little baby cows wearing their, their warm winter coats <laughs> and just like playing so with each cute. other. Yeah. <laughs> I love cows and donkeys. <laughs> anyway, okay. See, this is what happens. We're like, we have our side conversations in the midst of our, our interviews and hopefully people dig it. but. <laughs> I don't think they will. <laughs> I hope. I mean, hopefully, this is we're talking about important things, folks. Yes. Beauty of cows, and cows you and know horses and goats and rams. Yeah. Otters. And not liking fast food. Oh, otters! Otters are cool. Do you want to know a story? Yes, always. The other day, I was I was driving down Dog Bar, which is where I live off of, and there was a dog running in the street, and my first reaction was, "Oh yeah." And I stopped the car and I hopped out. I was like, come here. She came right up to me. I was like, you're going to love Tormund. Oh, you have a collar. Okay. And I returned her. <laughs> I feel like this is another part of my life mission is to help animals. And I want to do that by all means possible. <laughs> the second dog I found, I, I also found a really adorable pit bull. And I just wanted Tormund to have a brother so badly and his wonderful owner comes around the corner and she's like thank you so much i was like oh he's yours <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm gonna keep an eye out in like different rural neighborhoods just to make sure you're not creeping up in your car looking for lost animals 
It's just driving around, Tyler. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just, you know, you're taking, you're thinking about your next movie. Uh, uh, but I'm sorry. We need somebody to animate you driving into the road, seeing the dog and saying, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was like the freaking Kool-Aid man from from Family Guy. You know what I mean? I, I was so stoked. You know, there's no cars anywhere. I just see this dog and I'm like, you're going to love life. <laughs> So much editing, but I it's such I, a great way to start the day talking to you because I have so much joy and laughter in me <laughs> all the way down on my toes right now. <laughs> I absolutely agree. This I've been looking forward to this all weekend. However, I was waiting because you've been you've been busy. I'm like, I, I was waiting this morning. Like, we'll see. Maybe. You are you've been busy too. I have, but I don't live in Northern California and I don't have a studio. So <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Three songs on the move, Falling yes. Inside, which is a metal song that I'm featured on. I never in my, I know, I, I know, <laughs> but love it. Screamo, everything like the bands that I used to work for. Shout out Air is Mine. Um, <laughs> Falling Inside, Release, and Angels. I don't know why I fe always feel the need to do that on my hands. I've been told it's rude. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm stoked for you to hear them. I can't, what, what are the possible dates for those to be dropped? Do you know? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. March 22nd is Little Fishy featuring my father, Matthew Modine. Love his singing voice. Um, April 13th is a angels and 420 is release. Oh, that's amazing. I do. <laughs> I, I need to ask the song you're featured in. Is there a music video? And are you going to be dressed as like some kind of tech Viking or something crazy? I'm going to make note of that and I'll give you a credit <laughs> and I'll pitch that. Cause <laughs> I was like, Whoa, that went in such a cool direction. <laughs> <laughs> no video as of now, but I just recorded okay. my vocals and reaching that. Oh, I've been watching these great documentaries um, about Metallica, um, Lamb of God. Janis Joplin. Oh, this freaking incredible documentary that is three hours long and it takes you through the experience of Woodstock. And I'm just learning about the physicality of singing and the expressions that, you know, and I've been singing for years and I've, and I've loved it, but these documentaries in particular are opening my, my eyes and my ears to things that I never, I never even considered. Oh my gosh, I'm going to text you this freaking song get by with a little help from my friends i can't think of the the guy's name the singer's name excuse me oh my gosh it's so powerful i've never been so quiet during a performance it is so beautiful and he's but the way that he's moving that's what i'm saying it's like we we're, we have to be so aware of our physicality with what we do right as performers hmm. and never never do something unless it's a choice of the act of the character that you're playing that's nerve wracking because sometimes you need to wipe your nose in the middle of a scene. And it's like, do you want to stick to that? I was like, I swear to God, I just, I felt something happening. And I just wanted to do it really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, right, I'm trying to think that, that <laughs> I know, I know the song you're talking about. It, wait, it was, it's in the documentary, right? Joe Cocker. Yes. Yes. Because I had a regular at the, the bar I worked at. Oh my God. Eight years ago. Older retired teacher who loved Joe Cocker <laughs> and that song really? would play all the time. Oh yeah, but it, it was a great like Pandora playlist. I don't doubt it. Anything that he's on is going to be brilliant. Are you saying you're going to cover that song at some point? Or you know, there are certain songs that I hear that I just feel like you can't. Yeah. They're untouchable. They've been. Oh my gosh, you know, like I tried to um, not try to. I recorded "Junk" by the Beatles. Or no, 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 not by the Beatles. Junk by Paul McCartney. Correct me, Ty. <laughs> I, I think I think so. You're you're I trust you to be the music. Okay, wait, hold on. And now I gotta I'm sorry, listeners, I gotta Google it. Okay. I'll wait. I'll come back to I'll come back to that answer. <laughs> I'll find some lip balm in between our pause. <laughs> it is Do you have all of your interviews like this? 
I I'll okay, I'll I'll wholeheartedly admit. Yeah. Some are more fun than others. Yeah. But I've never had as much fun as I've had talking with you because we became friends so <laughs> quick within so quick. five minutes of talking. <laughs> Uh, I, I listened to the other uh, episodes of your podcast. Oh no! I just listened, going, "Is he having a good time?" <laughs> <laughs> Is it Paul McCartney? It was Paul McCartney. Okay, so you got it. You got so, it. So, I did a cover of "Junk" by Paul McCartney, and I just—it was that feeling. I was like, "No, he did it so perfectly." Although I'm not sure who did it first. Get by with a little help from my friends. Was it the Beatles or Joe Cocker? I feel like it was the Beatles. Well, then Joe Cocker did it in jeez yeah. wheeze. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That'll be the, that's the TikTok, <laughs> like, thumbnail. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I love Joe Cocker. And that kind of sounds like... Um, I'm sure you've you've heard both versions of the song, but uh, the song hurt when it was done by Nine Inch Nails, and then Johnny Cash did it and knocked oh. it out of the park. Like Nine just, Inch Nails did it, and then Johnny Cash did it. I believe that's that's what happened. No it, fucking way! It that's came out so... later. Yeah, it's and then you know it it's it, both versions are amazing, and even Nine Inch Nails was saying, "Yeah, that version is amazing." <laughs> It's 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 awesome. So, uh, yeah, I just I thought it's interesting to talk to. I don't talk to a whole lot of musicians on here, but, you know, the the idea of covering somebody else's art and, you know, if you could bring yourself to it or if there's too much tied to it, you know, there's there's so much um, respect. An, an example. There. So sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, go, 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 go. Because of, I, I love how you said that. Um, an example of of a song that I covered. I remember hearing Machine Gun Kelly and Youngblood's I Think I'm OK. Oh my gosh. And I remember it hitting so close to home. And I immediately heard how I wanted to cover it. And I got in touch with John Ander. I got in touch with Kevin and was like, it's a voice note. I'm in between takes. It was when I was filming fear. And I'm like, just listen, this is what I'm thinking. You know, and I'm singing like a mad person. And they're like, all right, Ruby, you're like, when you get back, we'll do it. <laughs> but that song came out exactly how I wanted it to, how I heard the song. The song itself is incredible. It my version is just so sad. <laughs> Sorry, I was enjoying your Whoa, I did a maniacal laugh there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew your giggle was coming up right after that. I can't, I can't take, I can't do it. I can't look at you sad. Um I know. but I mean with that with that sadness you you know would bring to it it there's a whole nother flood of emotions you could bring to somebody else who's listening to it right i hope so because the lyrics of that song are so powerful and as i said they resonated with me on such a level and it was probably when i recorded that song that i started feeling like yeah it's time it's my time to leave los angeles i want to go to northern california where Let's you're... get really dramatic now, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find some background music for this next story. <laughs> <laughs> She's going north on the PCH. Will she return? Who knows? <laughs> on the PCH. That was great. <laughs> That's the only, I know the PCH and the 405. That's all I know from California. Don't go on the 405. <laughs> that's the one that I took to go up north don't take the 405 <laughs> I was it was crazy because my, one of my absolute favorite skits from SNL is the Californians as uh, you know it's everybody's but I lived in New York when that came out and it was so funny but then I I was living in LA and I realized how on point that skit is because I'd be listening to people talking about driving directions and I'd be like what like where are we going <laughs> I love that skit oh they need to they need, they need to bring that back because I, I feel like it's probably more relevant now than ever <laughs> and when they break character and they're laughing that's probably some of my favorite parts in film. Like I have watched Seinfeld bloopers equally as much as I've watched the show. Really? Oh yeah. I think it's, I think it's good for actors to take to, to get a glimpse into that, that, you know, 
because we have so much pressure and we're especially early on in our career to be perfect. There's so much stress behind wanting to be perfect, right? Seeing these people that you look up to, these comedians, these actors, just they're so brilliant. And sometimes they're like, oh, fuck, what? <laughs> and you're like, great. Oh, OK. I don't know. It, it, there's some sort of relief watching all of that. And also they are so funny. <laughs> I don't know how Julia Louis-Dreyfus ever got a scene done. She laughs so much on that show. I love her. <laughs> I feel like she almost has to hold her breath for part of the scene just to mm -hmm. focus on something else and not the dialogue. <laughs> or she like turns away from camera and you know that she's just like. <laughs> I think that might be my favorite um, Bill Hader move whenever he's doing something on Barry and he's in the scene because he breaks more than anybody else. and He just turns yeah. away and he comes back all serious. <laughs> oh, on the, oh, I thought you went on Saturday Night Live because he said that his character on the news that always went like that. Oh, yeah. He had never, he never was aware of the punchline that would be coming with the, yeah, with this, with the scene. And when he would laugh, he would cover his mouth. Because <laughs> John Mulaney like, would put in you. random shit. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> no, it's uh, honestly, uh, the day you're on SNL is the day I'm actually going to sit down for a live episode and watch it all the way through. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Let's continue to put that into the into the okay, universe put it out there because i also like i want to also uh, just expand on your your writing and your directing and just from one writer to another have you found your perfect spot to write i mean your perfect atmosphere your perfect environment where you feel like you get the most done or are you you good no matter what i'm good no matter what Confident. And I, I'm sorry that I said that. So, you know, it's just I, I feel that I'm constantly writing. I, I have book after book that the pages are just filled. And that helps because I can reference it with my music. And if I'm reading for a character and she's going through something, I go like, wow, I remember that I was going through something that, that was kind of similar to this and I can go back. But what I figured out is that I can write anywhere and I need to, because if I think of something, it has to be written down because God forbid I forget it. Then you don't want to talk to me. I'm like, how did I, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be around me. <laughs> it co I mean, it comes with the territory, right? Honestly, it's, you get made fun of for it by some people, but I will put in random scene ideas or dialogue into the notes app on my phone. So I don't forget it because you don't have your notebook everywhere. And exactly. the follow-up question, do you listen to music while you write? Or are you more of a, um, how do I put this? Just a, an ethereal kind of space sort of writer. You don't need that musical push. I like um, I like silence, but I also really appreciate, uh, excuse me, I really appreciate listening to chakra music. So it's just instrumental, beautiful, like meditative music. Because sometimes if I'm listening to music, I'm like, oh, man, this drop is crazy. Oh, you know, <laughs> and then I'm writing and I'm starting to sing along and I'm like, what was I just writing? <laughs> so it's better if it's meditative and calming. <laughs> <laughs> you like that hand movement? I think I use it every time I use the word meditative. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I, I hear, yeah, uh, you know, meditation, that's all I see is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy. That's cool. <laughs> I never thought about writing it to meditation music. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it is harder to write with dialogue based, you know, music behind you. But yeah, I never thought about that. That's a good and idea. You don't know you you never know the next note that's coming. So you can't anticipate it. You know, it's something new and it's it's not distracting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I learned I learned something new today. Because <laughs> <laughs> I I will admit I've. uh the last one I wrote, I was listening to nothing but 90s alternative music, like young punk rock, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> clearly that's Lump... that's close to my heart. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, it's it's close to chakra music um, when you really break it down. Uh, <laughs> <I can't> even... <laughs> uh, no, I found myself I was writing the lyrics to Lump <laughs> without actually knowing it. Lump. Which one uh, is? by presidents of the United States of America. I'm not going to sing it because I'm not a singer. I'll have, I will I'll play it as soon as we hang up. That's yeah. the first song that's playing in the house. I don't think I've ever heard that song. You haven't? <laughs> well, so much to show you. Uh, yes. 
Yeah, I completely agree. But I always like asking writers what your perfect writing environment is like, or if you know, um, you're somebody like myself, I just put an AirPod in and I can be anywhere and you just zone out. So with your writing, with your directing, with your singing, with your acting, what's taking the full focus right now? What are you so not solely focused on, but what's taking your attention more than most, if there is any sort of distinction? I, it's funny because I think about this a lot. Um, they they all require my full attention. I can't divide it. And I I was nervous that I because because I was aware of what I was going into as things started accumulating. And I was like, I gotta be really strong in myself. I have to be, you know, really confident. I have to practice what I find important. I think I've told you about this, the triangle that I take so very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, physical, mental, spiritual. But yeah, they um they all require my full attention. And it it really does have to do with the fact that I have that tribe around me of my friends and my family that are helping me. And I don't want to risk wasting their time. They've heard this. They're like, you're not wasting my time. But I'm just, I'm telling you, um, I don't want to risk wasting their time. I don't want to waste time. Um, so if I start something, I want to finish it not only for myself, but for the people that are giving me their time and giving me their energy. So right now, for example, we're working on three songs and then in the midst of that song, I get an audition. This is a weird pilot season, as you know, that we're in the midst of, (laughs) and I'm like, I got to get on that right away. Let's finish this, this verse. And then I'm going to start studying for that, do the audition Che's like, hey, what do you want to talk about for the movie? And I'm like, on my way. (laughs) And we start texting and talking, getting on the phone, talking about that. And then I think that what's important when you have so much going on is, okay, you know, so that you're not getting flustered and you're not getting overwhelmed. Yeah. So I I think that at this point in my life, I'm learning how to multitask without losing my (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> because also and I, I know I feel like the you know dog people will really appreciate and understand this in the midst of all of that Tormund is like number one to me I'm like I have to walk him no matter what I've got to play fetch with him I've got to run around with him I want him to play with all of his friends I don't want my dog to suffer you know so there's a lot going on <laughs> and this is what we refer to as a champagne problem I got too comfortable. My knee came up. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, keep your knees off the camera. Okay. This is a professional environment. I know. With my tie dye pants. (laughs) Yeah. With the most colorful pants. I, Jesus. (laughs) Uh, You talked about, you know, multitasking, being overstimulated, finding those moments to calm down, be with your pupper. And is that, I mean, being with your, with your boy, I mean, is that your way of decompressing? Does that help you alleviate that tension? You just, I don't know, you're, you're able to be somewhere else for at least five, 10 minutes, however long you can, and then go right back into the next thing. Yeah. And I, I always tell him, I'm like, I love you so much. He knows what the, uh, the word auditions mean. So like for this, uh, this interview, I can say auditions. I love you. And I'll come to my room. He's not going to scratch on the door. He's not going to bark. Not, unless somebody knocks on the door and he knows he's got to bark for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I I love that. Dogs are such a blessing to us. And I think that, excuse me, no. When you have a dog, love it. Learn. <laughs> I, and the reason why I'm, I'm getting so animated is because I people that have dogs and don't give them the attention they require, don't stimulate them. I'm like, well, why do you have a dog? Oh, I'm going to get so much backlash for that comment. I feel it. That's why I started to deflate as I started talking about it. <laughs> no, you won't. You won't get any backlash. You want to know why? Because I agree. Okay. All right. You're listening to the show. Huh? You hear me? No. We could have, you know what we should do? Our next interview should just be about dog life. <laughs> Be. <laughs> <We're back. laughs> It's going to be great. I love it. No, when we're in person, it'll be even worse. I promise you. Oh, I know. Yeah. No, yeah. And, and people are going to be so annoyed by us. So one of my very best friends in the world, Sutiera, 
which is funny because I want you to interview her so badly. Um, she and I met on Shameless. Everywhere we go, people ask us to be quiet. And we're like, no, <laughs> we're just laughing. I know, but just, can you laugh softer, please? We're like, okay. And it, it lasts for like two minutes. And then we start laughing even harder because we're trying to be quiet. It's just not who we are. And I feel like that's similar energy to you and I. We're going to get together and people are going to be like, <laughs> what is going on over here i just <laughs> somebody um somebody had listened to the last episode when it was on and they're saying you know it it was like being in a cafe that's packed and all i heard was the two of you and I'm like, thank you yeah. thank you very much i appreciate I that, love that. <laughs> I, I mean before we move on to the other questions like i just want to say mm -hmm. how proud i am of you for like doing all these different especially going into like writing and directing having two projects you're working on and doing everything you can to make those real i mean you submitted one already right so it's mm -hmm. that's a lot uh that is that is a lot of responsibility that's a lot of ambition like i just i want to say how proud i am of you from from you know your buddy in the rocky oh, mountains <laughs> it's so easy right now in my life no, don't I'm like, cry. thank you tyler save it for the studio booth Yes, I will. Oh, uh, you know, because you know what they say? They say um, to, to actors, if you're starting to feel sad, I, I'm so glad that I, I don't hear this in classes anymore. But in your everyday life, if you start to feel emotional about something, they say, save it. You know, like if I'm upset about something and I want to show that emotion, they say, no, 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 save it. Hold on to that until you get a project and you can use it. And we never know when that project is going to come, right? So now we're holding that in and all we want to do is burst into tears, hypothetically speaking. <laughs> and then finally you get to set and you're, they, they say the line to you and you're like, <laughs> Are you I saying... don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Cause it sounds like you're saying you're the A bomb of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, that's, that wasn't my intention. I was saying that I'm glad that we don't learn that in acting classes anymore. Hold it all in. <laughs> no. Yeah, I feel like there's some really big examples of people holding it in and it just yes. did not go well, right? It's and not. I'm sorry to go back to Seinfeld, but it's like the serenity now. Hold it all in. At some point, <laughs> it's going to pop. <laughs> Do you say that pretty often in your uh, daily life? No. <laughs> no uh, i somebody uh somebody recently told me to say goose frappa you gotta take it because i i couldn't get it it's so funny that i'm telling you this i was up on the mic and just try to imagine me like i i had my fists on my head i was so annoyed because i couldn't sing this note right <laughs> and my producer just turned around and was like you gotta say goose frappa dude and i was like is, is that from the Adam Sandler movie? Yeah, it is. You got it. <laughs> I just want to make sure what I'm being, you know, what the suggestion is. <laughs> My face hurts so much <laughs> from laughing. I, that may be the the only time I've ever heard somebody reference that line from Anger Management seriously. Like seriously, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and he was so calm and cool as he said it too. And I was just like, Adam Sandler, you're okay, okay. <laughs> Goose Rapa. All right. Well, that's mm -hmm. going in. Okay. <laughs> that is, I will say that does work. Goose Rapa? So, yeah. Yeah. Or, I, I mean, when I was very overwhelmed um, between like trying to balance a, a day job and auditions um, or my day job just drove me nuts. I would quote party down every single time. I would just say, are we having fun yet? And then yep. I would just go about my day like, as, as awkwardly as I could. I would, I would say that in the cooler where nobody could hear me. Yeah. And it, and it works. You ask yourself. Yeah. I yeah. don't, I don't doubt that. Yeah. You, you could all need our own, our own ways to stabilize ourselves. Yes. Mine yes. is so, my imagination runs so wild for my grounding. I, I take three controlled breaths. And when you exhale, you have to as slowly as possible exhale. 
and then in your mind you go from and I go through the floor go into the ground right we're in the dirt now we're surrounded by rocks we're surrounded by the critters and the you know all the centipedes and the worms now we go down now we're in water nope now we're in rock <laughs> And then after that is water. And then after that is fire. Which part of you do you want to focus on? You know, which part doesn't feel settled? It's so strange, but my imagination goes wild. I, I painted this huge picture that's above me based off of those levels. I don't know. That's a <laughs> lot. But it, no, but it's a lot in a way that I know it works. I mean, you're... It, <laughs> When you're in your editing of this, can you, every time I laugh, just grab it and turn the volume down? <laughs> I was thinking about boosting it. But, oh, okay. You know. Okay, then you have to put an echo on it and put some reverb around it. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll auto-tune it. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you you have so much going on, so you need to visualize those different placements for it to to truly work. and. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like a lot has changed since we had first spoken mm -hmm. to the point where, you know, it was, um, and we can talk about fear really quick if you like, since it's, it's still out. Right. So we can promote that, but <laughs> yes. you were, you were talking about, you know, fear and then just kind of approaching this year and seeing what you want to do. And it sounds like you are on track to accomplish every single one of those goals that you set out to do. And outside of yeah. the creative part, I mean, personally, do you have any goals in mind for yourself, like intrinsically something you wanted to accomplish you know, for yes. yourself this year? Always. I always want to work on my calmness, you know, being calm within myself. I'm, I overthink a lot, which causes unnecessary stress. <laughs> stress is not good for the human body. And it's difficult uh, to have. It's just a, like rapid thoughts constantly. So I'm always working on that. And I'm always working on calming, calm, you know, calm myself, calm surroundings. Sometimes I get really animated and crazy whenever I talk to you, usually <laughs> not really anybody else. <laughs> um, but yeah, just that. I want to work on being calm. <sighs> <laughs> See, you just did what? it. <laughs> I know, I'm like, what is your next question, Tyler? <laughs> Oh, yes, moving, moving right along here. Uh, let me go to the questions. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with that voice. Um, you should see Peter Sellers. Oh, sorry. What? What's, Later. What? what? Huh? I was going to say Peter Sellers. Um, I can't think of the name right now. Peter Sellers. He plays a prince and a pauper. They look the same. They swap places. We'll talk later. <laughs> oh, yeah. we. <laughs> that'll be our our post, post, so, post show chat uh <laughs> let's talk fear yes damn it uh <laughs> let's, fear. let's talk about fear oh what a great uh, experience you were right about the uh well i mean it's out now so we can we can probably talk yeah. spoilers right uh yeah the the which lady was um didn't prepare Bonnie me for Moore. that did you <laughs> There was no way to prepare you for her. She, um, no, and I say that in the most complimentary way. I mean, I, I finally got to see her at the premiere and she's just such a ball of beautiful light. I, I think that I, well, it doesn't matter. She, it, to work with, to work with somebody that loves what they do is such a blessing because it just, it, it, uh, it inspires you. Like we're here, you know, let's give it our all. Let's do it. And Bonnie gave me nightmares for so long after that film. She was on every part of the set randomly, just doing very scary stuff. And she knew that it was affecting me. So she really had it out for me. <laughs> but um, I told her at the premiere as I was hugging her and she had no idea that it had this effect on me, you know? And it's just, it's it, it that experience on that film, um, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. It was it, it was profound. And I keep using that word in every interview that I do about it. Um, but it's because the group of people that are on, that were on that set collectively was amazing. And I learned not only about 
my acting career. I took so much from Dion Taylor. He taught me so much stuff, as did my castmates. But more than that, I learned about being a better person in my everyday life. And uh, I was handed down, you know, advice from Batch. I, I was given advice from Jessica and Tyler and all of them in, in, in minor little ways. And I feel like it's probably similar to Bonnie. You know, they're like, I had no idea that that conversation resonated with you so intensely. But to have filmed that and then waited like two years to see the film and be brought back together with everybody, it was just so powerful. It seems and terrifying. Like <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I saw it by myself. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it's a very, um, I'll use your word. It was a very profound experience, not only from watching the film and what the characters go through, but what I'm sure, like you said, you guys went through together. It created this sort of bonding agent where uh, I'm sure you felt more vulnerable than, than normal because you, guys were sharing all these different experiences so yeah when you said it, it it changed your almost your your perception or your perspective I mean what what was the first sort of insight on set for you to say wow this is this is a different project I mean what about it was so moving for you so we filmed fear in the height of the pandemic and I remember being in lockdown <laughs> seems so surreal saying that sorry um I, I remember my my agent getting in touch with me and saying, hey, Dion Taylor wants to talk to you. Um, he's got this project. I'm like, cool, you know, where's the script? Uh, there is no script. Talk to Dion, you know, and we'll go from there. I got on the phone with Dion Taylor. There was it was impossible to say no because he is he has got a vision and he is gonna make that vision work. He is he is an incredible director. He is an amazing person. His wife, Roxanne Taylor, them together, they are an unstoppable force. But speaking to Dion about my character, about what the film would be, he said, you know, you just got to trust me. And I did. And that's, by the way, the case with, with the cast, too. We all have, you know, we're all entering with, with similar experiences. But to arrive there and be like, oh, my gosh, you know, we're on set. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're around people. The lodge itself was similar to how he described it in the film. It was so spooky. We had our own rooms that, you know, for safety, for COVID safety, in between takes, please go to your own separate quarters. So you're there in your room and you're hearing spooky things happening. And to quote T.I., he was like, you couldn't see like your hand in front of your face. It was so dark in some of these corridors and yeah, nobody wanted to travel around by themselves. And it was just, so that gets you going, right? You get there and you're like, oh shit, this is going to be really scary. <laughs> but then action. And the the dancing on this set was unlike any set that I've been on. The energy level, the excitement, the commitment to keep everybody safe, but also having fun. Yeah, I got to be that person and say that. But it was just, it was amazing. and. The thing with Dion is um, he's a lighthouse. You know, you can be lost at sea because sometimes we're on set and we don't know what's really happening because there are changes being made and you're trying to keep up with everything. But at some point you have to surrender. And that's what I did with, with Dion. I was like, I was sometimes confused, but he's so clear. He, he, he knows what he's doing. And like I already said, he's like, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to get done. And, and that's another form of inspiration, similar to what I was talking about with Bonnie. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm working with this incredible human being who is so driven to scare the crap out of everyone, but also have a powerful freaking message because the message in the film itself, oh, I was so happy. You know, my aunt called me and told me that her words. She's like, I get it. It's a scary film, you know, and I don't like scary movies. She said, but then I went home after I watched it and I laid in bed awake for so long thinking about the fears that I have in my body and my heart and my mind from when she was a child and things that still plague her and still, you know, things that still disturb her that she's like, after seeing that film, it really has encouraged me to face my fears and release them. So with that message coming out and people taking that message and putting that into their everyday life, 
that's a gift. Wow. Wow. And that's, that's a very different response to so many horror films today. You know, it's yeah. usually just, it's like you said before, it's, Oh, there's a witch in the corner and it's, it's nothing else. You fall asleep and, and that's it. But to have that kind of response is very, um, I don't know. It, it, it's so explicit now. You don't, yeah. you don't get it a whole, whole lot. So, I mean, even when I saw it, um, I'd gone home and yeah, it's kind of funny, you know, walking through the house in complete darkness and hoping it's <laughs> to grab me. Uh, but also the, the, the response I had was fairly similar in the fact that I was laying down and even subconsciously I'm going through different memories in my head and think, Oh my God, like that's my fear. That's my fear. And that's my fear. Yeah. Uh, and are they yeah. consuming you? Are they crippling you? Are you know, because um, that's similar to um, if we talked about, which we won't do today, but if we talked about the pain body, keeping the pain body that lives within all of us alive by feeding it. And if we decide not to be afraid of X, Y, you know, of, of anything, we really can do anything. Absolutely. Yeah. My new spotlight just popped up as I said that. And I'm like, we made news. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's good news. <laughs> oh yeah, this is live. I didn't tell you. There's no editing. Oh, yeah. This is all We're on YouTube. On CNN. <laughs> <laughs> well, in in lieu of us, oh my god, the headphones. In lieu of us, uh, you know, obviously doing more episodes together because it just come yes. on, it's it's got to happen. I will. Uh, I'm going to start closing out this episode or this recording anyway with uh, something synonymous with what you were just talking about, and that's you know your experience in working on that set and working on fear we do want to hear about your party story uh i'm not sure if you recalled that but a story that has occurred uh something that happened in your life that stands out so immensely you would easily recant it amongst friends at a party could be horrific could be hilarious which they usually are um could be awkward <laughs> it could be anything in your repertoire hmm I have quite a many party stories. Hmm. May I ask for an example of one? <laughs> yes. Uh... <laughs> As I think, because you'll talk and I'll think, but I'll listen yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah. I, huh, no, you won't. You never listen to me. Um, yeah, I, I think my biggest party story was my first round at Sundance in 2017 when Wind River was premiering. And I went to my first ever SAG actors brunch with a bunch of people I've watched for years and and I was such a fan of. I talked about breakfast foods with Kamel Nanjiani. Uh, oh I was hanging God. out with, with Jason Ritter. Uh, there's just a ton of people that I met and I talked to you for a little bit. But the best part was using the restroom in this very crowded space. It was the only place that was quiet. There was music playing and it was very relaxing. So I was using, using the facilities. And uh, somebody comes in. I don't look at the person because that's, you know, it's guy code. You don't look at the guy while you're uh, you're ah, gotcha. using the restroom, obviously. <laughs> um, but, but then I kind of like notice out of the corner of my eye that it's Matt Bomer. And I just kind of <gasps> went static and finished my business, started washing my hands. And he looks over and he goes, hey, man, is this, is this your first time? Or are you an actor? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm at the brunch and just kind of absorbing everything he goes hey man just take every single second in this is this is a very pivotal time for you enjoy it have a great day and i left with the biggest oh. smile on my face so that that is my party story one of my party stories that isn't um yeah it's not thanks awkward. for it's not... setting the bar so high <laughs> <laughs> um i've had incredible moments you know, be it within the industry and the parties that we get to go to. Um, I think that I say that because I'm grateful. I, you know, I'm, I'm usually <laughs> very starstruck and, <laughs> you know, when I, yeah, I know I, I really had to calm that down in my younger years, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charles Finch throws the Chanel party. And I remember Oh, the first time I, I really got to go sitting at this table, he, uh, my dad and I went together, but we didn't sit together. We were at, you know, so I'm like, oh, I'm a grown up. Oh. <laughs> um, 
and and I um I just remember having this profound moment with Minnie Driver and she was not emotional but she was so powerful when she was talking to me about being strong and and not being you know don't hide and along with her, uh, her and because it wasn't at the party, but Rosie O'Donnell also, I had an encounter with her in an elevator and oh my gosh, talk about like three floors of just, she was like, you don't hide. You don't, you know, don't be afraid of anyone. I've got your back. And this was just an encounter. I got in the elevator. I was like, oh, hey. And she was just ready. I don't know where she was coming from, but that's a different story. So anyway, I'm at Char <laughs> I'm at Charles Finch's Chanel party. I am in this elegant dress and I just feel like this is a moment in time that I'll never forget, which I did. And this moment with Minnie Driver, that she was just giving me advice on what to do within my career, how to hold myself as a woman, because there's, you know, more danger around that we feel. And it was, it was just, I remember leaving and and feeling happy emotions. You know, I cried because I felt so honored to have been embraced like that by a woman that I've been watching my entire life, you know, not to mention then leaving that conversation and going to the bathroom and Greta Gerwig is there on her phone privately speaking. And I didn't eavesdrop. I didn't listen to what she was saying, but she seemed to be having a moment. And she turned and looked at me and like, I got chills. I was just like, oh my God, you're, you know, I wanted to like Wayne's world, you know, <laughs> but I had this, this nice, very moment in passing with her. So this kind of, this whole night, you know, just having the opportunity to meet so many women again, that I just, I look up, I look up to so much and them being kind enough to welcome me in and give me some bit of advice. So that 10 year later I'm sitting here with you going like mini driver is a saint <laughs> oh <That>, Tyler <laughs> no that oh my god yeah that it get it gave me like the full body chills thinking about it because I can put myself in that situation because you know. we all have those moments right where yeah. maybe we we doubt ourselves or we question what we're doing are we even good enough to be in the midst of of the people that were around but then you realize that we're all human beings mm -hmm. and we all have insecurities. I'm so happy my phone just told me 20%. We all have insecurities and we all feel that way. Not one person doesn't feel insecure and that's okay because that's what's going to help us get together and be stronger together. <sighs> I'm going to keep sad. that. I'm, no, I'm, I'm keeping that as your advice for this episode, if that's cool, because yeah. that's fucking awesome <laughs> no that's uh oh my god i can't i can't you know what i'll reflect on that in my personal time uh because your phone's at 20 percent, and we can't have it die not now yeah and also um, if you're ever feeling some kind of way you can always text me and like i i love that that's what for me personally phones i there's something that's on instagram right now it's like uh when he, when the phones were attached to the wire or <laughs> Or attached to the wire to the wall, but they obviously said it better than I just said. <laughs> um, humans were free because now we're stuck on our phones, right? Mm -hmm. But I I try not to follow that. And instead, it's like what I just said to you. I like having a phone so that I can reach out to somebody in my tribe. And I'm, I'm doubting myself. What the F am I doing? You know, and they just calm you down. And it's good, especially within our industry, to have people that we can trust. And that we can word bomb it to and know that those words are safe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm and, the same, Tyler. <laughs> and I'm here for you. I, I mean, it, it, cause it also helps to have like, yeah, you have your, your tribe, but it also helps to separate, you know, like family from, you know, like everyone has their own <laughs> ways of validating you. And sometimes you need family, sometimes you need friends. That makes perfect sense. So yeah, I am, I'm right there with you. That's right, everybody. We're texting buddies. Eat it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, last thing before we wrap up any shout outs slash promotions I can put into the show notes for this episode I have three new songs on the move two songs I am featured on two so that's actually a collective of five you know what's funny Tyler this is the second time that you've asked me this question and I stumbled do you remember how badly I stumbled last time 
Anyway, I've got new I've got new music on the move. I have a few projects that are in pre-production. I am beginning to write and prepare to direct. Do <laughs> you see the fear? <laughs> but um yes, uh nothing in particular this episode, but there is lots and lots on the move and little by little I will be sharing it on my Instagram at Ruby Modine. You are going to crush directing by the way. And you will be in in the position, I hope, of me directing you. I don't know why I felt like, hey, oh, this might be you, <laughs> you call the shots. I'll send you my self-tape. <laughs> That's all on you. Our friendship does not uh, weigh upon the you know the odds of me getting a, a role in your movie. Or like that. <laughs> that was a great place to laugh, though. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't affect it hmm at all uh <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding um okay so we're gonna wrap up this recording uh yep. but i do want to ask you again have you since seen wayne's world since we last talked yes always, okay. are, you, <laughs> are you ready for your awkward goodbye i love that movie so much why haven't they made a wayne's world with two women now whoa mike drop i feel That's like a, they will you and i we're gonna start this kate mckinnon has to be garth or wayne she could be either one yes you're right that was great see? that was so fast see oh i tommy boy wayne's world and mystery men i always have something animal lined house? up for reboot what about animal house i love animal house um i i haven't seen it in a while though i just love the scene when they bring his car back and He's like, you fucked up. You know, he puts his arm. <laughs> puts his arm. <laughs> you fucked up by trusting us. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, Skylar, thank you for an amazing interview. Number two. Number two. <laughs> perhaps, we, uh, perhaps we can intertwine both episodes now, and we'll have a full two hour episode <laughs> on our hands. Oh, we will with the video too. So you'll have two different looks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll go back and oh, forth. Gosh. Back and forth. I know. In the first. Okay, that's it. Let's text. <laughs> Well, we, we gotta do your, let's do your awkward goodbye i'll stop the recording and then we'll okay, try it for like that five more minutes was it. that was it <laughs> that was that was the awkward part um no i guess it's now that i'm sitting here shaking feeling uncomfortable that we're still talking about nothing 